hope this is taping this time. I've been having horrible luck with my camera on that. Anyway. I know I'm in the same clothes, or at least it looks like it. Well, it is, but I do wear other shirts underneath, and I do shower, and I do change my clothes. This is just the hoodie I wear around the house all the time. Because I hate having the heat up if it's just me in the house, so. Anyways, um, I am going to tell you my thoughts on this book, Damage, by Kathy Glass. This is a nonfiction book. This is published by Harper Element. It was published in 2006, and Kathy Glass is the lady's pseudonym. She publishes under that book, but she is actually a foster carer in the UK. She's been fostering children for 20 years, as of 2006, and so it would be, what, 25 years now. And at the time that this book, that she wrote this book, this little girl, Jody was going to be her last foster child. She she just expended so much with this child she didn't think she could go on and do it anymore um, I actually after re reading this book went to her website and was actually happy to hear that she did continue fostering she does have three children of her own 13 15 and 17 uh, the 17 year olds her son and then one of the girls was actually a foster child at one time when Jody, the little girl in the story, came to Kathy, she was just under eight years old. And she had already been through four or five uh, foster carers' homes in four months. She, nobody could handle her. So the system came to Kathy and said, you're basically our last hope. If you can't take Jody, then she's going to have to go into an institution. And that basically means that that's the last hope for a child and that there's basically no hope left for them to, to go into a family life, a home life. And of course, Kathy didn't want that. Kathy wasn't fostering anybody else at the time. And her children, like I said, were older. And so she thought, you know what, I'm going to try because I can't just let this girl, you know, put into be put into an institution. So when Jody first came to her, she was violent physically and verbally. And, um, you know, they had to deal with that. Luckily, Kathy had a lot of years of experience fostering, so she was able to be patient but firm. Um, she knew from the get-go that she couldn't give in to Kathy, or she couldn't give in to Jody. Um, she had to set ground rules and stick to them. Now, Jody was used to getting everything that she wanted because all she would do is throw a temper tantrum, and I'm talking about a huge temper tantrum. And, of course, people wanted to stop, so they would give in. And so she tried doing that with Kathy, and Kathy just did not give in. And this went on, you know, through the whole book, it, it slightly got better, um, but it seemed like as that started to get better, other things started to rear its head. At one point in the story, Kathy realizes that there's something going on, and there goes my phone, but it's going to ring four times, I'm not answering, obviously. Um, something's going on, or what's going on in Jody's life, and obviously that's what's causing her to act out. So, um, she knows that she has to take it slowly with her, and she can't just demand to know what it is. I mean, she's an eight-year-old girl. Um, it comes out because <laughs> she, Jody, is actually caught, um, how do I say this? She has a life-size doll that she named Julie, and she was actually caught being sexually whatever with this doll. And she wasn't embarrassed by it when she got caught. She was just like, whatever. And Kathy was very shocked by this. She was like, this isn't normal. Um, Jody ended up coming out, not in so many words. Um, well, I guess maybe in so many words. Basically, Jody was abused. She was sexually abused by her father. Um... Now, if that isn't bad enough, it gets worse. And things slowly come out. Jody s slowly starts to tell Kathy things. And, you know, you're thinking, sexually abused by your own father, that's horrible. And she's only eight years old. And they thought they have this, that this has probably been going on for a few years. But the things that Kathy says that her father did, that's why you can't be faint of heart when you read this book. 
you cannot be overly emotional. You will be bawling your eyes out through this book. Um, you will be sick to your stomach. You will be so angry. It's just, yeah. And then, like I said, it just gets worse. You think and her father sexually abused her is bad enough. We'll just wait if you read this book. Um, so, of course, Jody, that's what she knows. She, she thought that was normal. And she's just starting to understand that that's not normal. That her dad was actually bad. Um, and so then, she starts to take on, once she starts letting the stuff out, you would think that a lot of times, you know, it's like a weight lifted off your shoulder, you start to feel better. But the stuff was so trapped up and submerged inside of her, that's where the anger was coming from, that when she started to feel safe in Kathy's house and she started to, to talk to Kathy about this stuff, that's when it came to the forefront and she was actually facing, you know, having to face it and, 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 and that again. And, um, she started having nightmares, night terrors, um, just, just to her behavior started really getting just really strange. Um, and through this thing too, I'm thinking, why isn't she seeing a psychologist? I mean, it was her behavior and her personality. I mean, her, her, Kathy, or, uh, Jody's, uh, motor skills, too, are like a four-year-old. Like, she 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 can't do a lot of stuff. And her talking, and she's just so mentally stunted. And I'm just thinking, why, why, why? Where are the psychologists, the psychiatrists, whatever, you know, in this? But I guess I had to remind myself that this is the system that we're talking about, and it's limited money. But I don't know anything about that, and I don't know anything about the U.K., but when you have a child this severe, aren't there people that do stuff pro bono or at a, at a cut rate or, I mean, because, sorry my camera's shaking, isn't it supposed to be with the best interest of the child, not about money? I don't know. I mean, forgive me if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm sure there's other circumstances why this can't always happen, but this girl is a rare case. Like, sorry about my camera, the cat just jumped off the table. Like, this unfortunately does happen to children, but when you come to the end of this book and find out everything that has happened to this girl, it is a rare case. At least I sure hope so. Um, that the extent of what happened to her doesn't happen to every child. Now, every child that does get abused, it's horrible. I admit that. It, it is gut-wrenching. But um, I can go off onto a, another thing about the whole... It just makes me so sad, you know, the things that children go through and the things that, like, and you know what makes me even more upset is they try to prosecute the father and that, and Jody had to go and get a physical done, you know, like a pap smear and that, and um, that proved that she was penetrated, but there was no DNA, of course, um, and then she had to go talk to the police, and they were trying, wanted to videotape her, um, basically saying what happened. She's eight years old. She's been through hell. She's just finally starting to feel safe somewhere. And they can't get her on videotape saying anything. So they can't prosecute the people? Come on. I mean, oh my God. Luckily, at the end of the story, though, they, they do get prosecuted. But for other reasons, not because of what happened to Jody. I have to say that what Kathy Glass went through herself and that there was times she wanted to give up on this little girl. And not, I don't want to say give up on her, but she almost threw in the towel because it was just so much. She was losing sleep. She was overly exhausted, stressed out. I mean, she's not a psychiatrist either. So to deal with all this stuff that this little girl was putting on her and, and sharing with her and that, it's like, and, the, and then she wants the little girl, of course, to be better. She wants to make her better. How can you do that? And and she doesn't have anybody that she can talk to. Um, the people that she does try to talk to in the system, everything just gets pushed around. And you have to, to I mean, what Kathy has done, that she did not give up on her and that she stuck it out, that's an angel. That is just, oh my gosh, you have to read this book. So not, aside from, from, the heartbreak that you will feel reading about this little girl, you will also see the strength 
and the courage and the love and just everything that Kathy had and that she gave of herself for this little girl. It's not just about all sadness. I mean, there is light in there. You have to look for it. You have to find it. And Man. Kathy Glass has written, has written other books about other foster children. This is the only one I've written. I've heard this is the worst of them. Um, it's not... It's detailed. Because what, what Jody has to say. So just be prepared for that. Um... But I was actually, like, I was able to sit through it. It was horrible, but I was able to read it. There is one book that I am not able to read. I actually got so sick to my stomach that I had to put this book aside. I had nightmares about it. And I, and this was years ago. It was probably 10 years ago. I can never go back to this book. Even just looking at the cover turns my stomach. Um, it's called A Boy a boy Called It or A Boy Named It or whatever it is. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. The things that that boy went through, that his mother made him do, atrocious. Oh, my God. I You know, that's another story for another day. But, um, yeah, if you can stomach this kind of stuff, I do highly recommend reading this book. Um, like I said, besides sadness, you will actually see some light in there. Um, so, yeah. I do have to say, on a quick note, I'm not going to do a big re uh, thoughts on this, but Emily... The book I got about the girl that's chronically sick by Emily Smucker. Um, I feel bad not giving it a good rating because I feel bad for the girl. But it's basically written off of her blog entries. Um, and there's not a lot. I mean, she does say a lot that she can't do stuff because she's sick. But there's not a lot of detail into, like, what actually is wrong with her. Like, is she getting stomach aches? Is she getting headaches? Um, you know... There's points where she says she's too weak to walk. At one point, she does have to use a cane. But that's the extent of it. Um, there's hints that she has West, West Niles. But um, one doctor says no. One doctor says yes. It's not confirmed. Um, I, uh... It just... I don't know. It was... It, I thought it'd be more detailed, I guess. Um... It's, it's basically reading somebody's blog is what it is. Um, there's no, like I said, when she doesn't feel good, she basically just says that she's still sick. And that's it. So, um, I feel horrible for her. I do. But I can't really give this a high rating. Um, because that's what it is. It's a blog. 